Well, good morning and welcome to Daylight with Dean number 357 on May 11th, 2021. Good morning. Yay, there is no static. <laughs> it sounds crystal clear. I noticed the volume on Thursday. Uh, for some reason, the gain got turned up the whole so high. And uh, I could tell it was really intense, the volume. <laughs> but it sounds really good now. So uh, grateful that you're here with me today and uh, would like to uh, enjoy my first sip of coffee. Feel free to join me if you'd like to. Wow. Wow. That is, <laughs> that is good stuff. And God is love. <laughs> and I love coffee. <sighs> well, how was your Monday. No, seriously, I'm waiting to hear. <laughs> uh, no, my Monday was good as well. Thank you so much for asking. It was good because it was my day off. Uh, it was a comedy of errors. <laughs> Just, <laughs> I, I read to my brother-in-law who's in from California all the things that were on my schedule for yesterday that I had to do. And um, the three main things that I did were nowhere to be found on my list. <laughs> so... Oh, so much for planning a big, uh, great uh, agenda on Monday. Uh, one thing that came up was the espresso maker Mother's Day gift that I bought my wife for um, Mother's Day from Aldi, of course. <laughs> I would not recommend usually buying your Mother's Day gift from Aldi, but I did. And her and her brother uh, uh, got it all ready to go, got it all set up, read all the instructions. Couldn't get the thing to work. <laughs> couldn't get the water to pump. Couldn't get the thing to work. So boxed it back up, took it to Aldi, and got the last one off the shelf in exchange. <laughs> we will see. We will see if this one... Um, provides any more <coughs> um, brewing power for the espresso than the uh, one that I got her for Mother's Day. <sighs> so, yesterday, I wanted to um, share... Um, I talked to a, a guy that's in our men's group and he said it was fine for me to share this. Um, he just kind of shared about his week and he talked about his trust, um, how he's learning to trust the Lord, um, even in the midst of, you know, all that, uh, <laughs> all that he experiences in his journey. And he kind of rattled off this saying he he made three statements right at the end and he he, he said them very quickly and they were kind of like a um, 
foundational um, set of statements that he believes and that he aspires to have influence his life every day. But when he said them, I was like, oh, that's good. Oh, that, that, but he said them so quick, I couldn't, I couldn't quite get it. So uh, I sent him a text message and he said, you have no idea how important these three statements are to me and how they guide my life, how they influence my decisions, how they help me in my walk with Christ. And I'm like, well, do you mind if I, do you mind if I um, share those on daylight? And he's like, no, by all means, please do. And I wanted to share them with you because um, it was, it was, just very inspiring to see somebody just have these three statements uh, so ready to remind him of God's faithfulness. And the statements are just simply, his words are true, his promises are real, and his way works. And um, I just gave thought to those <laughs> after he said, I'm like, oh, I got, I got my phone out and I started texting them to me. And I couldn't, I just couldn't get it. <laughs> His words are true. His words are true. Uh, in my sermon Sunday, um, it talked about when you teach, teach as though you're teaching the very words of God. And, you know, um, the evil one has done a very masterful job of convincing people that the Bible is too complicated, too archaic, not relevant, not helpful. Just avoid it. All it does is make you feel awful. I mean, just, you could pull out any one of a gazillion lies he has planted in the minds of men related to God's word. And I just have to remind us, uh, as this statement does, that God's words, they're true. They're just true. And in our culture, trying to figure out what's true and what's real is sometimes challenging. Um, but one thing you can know is that God's word, the, his words in his word, <laughs> and his word, God's words, his words are true. And his promises are real. And I think sometimes, um, um, preachers that, uh, have become known as preachers that only preach the positive, don't preach about sin, um, preachers that only um, make people feel good. I, I think sometimes when we step away from that, one of the things that we lose is the ability to trust in God's promises. Because when you read his word, there are very, very strong promises um, on both sides, positive and negative. <laughs> and his promises um, of blessing, I, I don't know about you, but I, I would rather trust and believe those than be suspicious of them. And I've never viewed God as a vending machine or a gumball machine. Oh, I do this and God does this and I put this amount of effort in and God rewards me with this. I, I don't, if that's, if that's how you view God's promises working, um, then there's a lot of opportunities for you to experience God 
as he truly is. But his promises are true. And please don't let challenges or bad times or tragedy or crisis in your life cause you to write off God's promises that are so true. And uh, his way works. <laughs> his, his way works. I remember being in my early 20s when all of the people that I was around outside of church, all the people I worked with, all the... Oh, man, I had a weird dream last night about scuba diving for golf balls at golf courses. <laughs> that was... Uh... <laughs> I dreamed that the people that bought my mother's property decided to buy my scuba diving for golf ball business and they bought all my equipment and they were, you know, studied about it and learned about it and were going out to do it. And and um, they, they, um, <laughs> they didn't want me to teach them or really show them. <laughs> it was, it was, uh, it was a weird dream. <laughs> but I remember when I was in my early 20s, I would be diving with kids that were college age and were not followers of Christ. And, and uh, I remember really uh, wondering if God's ways really work, <laughs> if his ways are really best. And uh, the ways of the world, the ways of fun, the ways of pleasure, the ways of... Uh, self just seemed so much more in style and popular. And I wanted to be in style and popular. <laughs> and his ways uh, didn't seem so in style and popular. And so this statement, uh, his way works, um, is a really strong affirmation. I'm so grateful that uh, I didn't give up on God's ways. Um, and that I too uh, want to adopt this set of statements as a reminder. His words are true, his promises are real, and his ways, his way works. Um, so. Thank you, my friend John, for sharing that in our men's group and for sharing that with me and letting me share it with you guys. Um, um, the other day on Daylight, I was talking about uh, the leader of our MOPS program who has led mops for quite some time and I was talking about this series of texts that we sent back to each other and um, I had written something to her but I couldn't remember what it was so I went back and looked at it and um, I said to our director of mops our mothers of preschool program that's what mops stands for sorry I said to her you are a gift to all who cross your path. You are a gift to all who cross your path. And I found, um, I, I, um, I, I find that that's kind of what I wanna be in my life. I wanna be a gift to everyone whose path I cross. And when I said this about um, this individual, I'm like, that is the most true statement. Um, every time I interact with uh, this person, I'm just like, I, I am so blessed to have them leading this ministry, to have them following Christ, to have them advancing the kingdom, to have them pouring into the lives of these mothers, um, to have them, um, in partnership with the river. I mean, just, um, I'm like, 
You're a gift to all who cross your path. And I hope that you are as well. I hope that you today kind of resolve in your spirit that I'm going to be a gift to everyone who crosses my path in whatever way that looks. And for me, I'm reminded in my driving that uh, I need to be a gift to everyone who crosses my path. <laughs> Even the person that uh, rides on my bumper and then passes me um, just to cut in front of me again. <laughs> I just, I just need to realize they, they don't need my high beams flashed on them. Uh, they, they just, I need to be a gift to them as well. So there are very uh, real ways that I want to be better at that. And I hope that uh, you do as well. So, well guys, great being with you this morning. Um, I'm gonna get head into the gym just a little bit early this morning. It's lower body day. And no, sorry, it's not lower body day. It is full body day, which is fully exhausting. So <laughs> uh, looking forward to that. And uh, thank you so much for being here today. Let's uh, close our time in prayer. Father, I thank you so much for each person joining in today. I pray, Lord, that you would bless them and watch over them, help them in their life, uh, help them in their day to day. May they live with a refreshed or renewed confidence in you, that your words are true, that your promises are real, and that your way works. And Father, I pray as we take that next level of trust, that next step of trust in our walk with you, I pray, Lord, that we will be a blessing to all who cross our path because we will be the ones filled with faith and trust and blessing from you for them. It's with great anticipation that I look forward to all that you have in store for me today. Thank you for your love and faithfulness, Jesus. I pray in your name, amen. All right, guys, thank you so much. And uh, can't wait till I get to see you tomorrow. Have a great day.